Martin Heidegger is one of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century. He is one of the major modern exponents of existentialism. Heidegger's central project consisted in a radical examination of the notion of being and its intrinsic relationship with time. His major work is Being and Time, published in 1927. Heidegger argued that our answer to the question of what being is would determine the future of humankind. So he developed his own hermeneutic or method of interpretation of texts. Philosophers to date has still failed to answer the question raised by Plato and Aristotle. What is being? Heidegger analyzes what he terms the sign or human being. What characterizes human being is its thrownness into the world or facticity. A human being is already cast into a series of relationships and surroundings that constitute his or her world. A second feature is existentiality or transcendence whereby a human being appropriates his or her world, impressing on it the unique image of her own existence and potential. In other words, a person uses the various elements of her world as given to realize herself. This positive feature is accompanied by a third characteristic, that of fallenness. In attempting to create oneself, the human being falls from true being, being immersed instead in the distractions of day-to-day -day living, becoming entangled in particular beings. The authentic being, the authentic self, is thus buried beneath the cares and distractions of life. How does a human being overcome such inauthentic existence? Inauthenticity consists in losing sight of the unity of human being, of human existence caused by attention to the practical interests and cares of daily existence. Human being is thereby prescinded and experienced as a series of desultory phenomena. Heidegger suggests that there is one particular state of mind which is unique, dread or angst. This refers to a sense of nothingness, of loss, of the emptiness when we look at life or existence in its totality as essentially oriented toward death. In such a mood, the human self attains knowledge of itself as a whole, as being to death. In other words, death is the fundamental fact that shapes our existence and the cause of our life. The mental state of dread enables us to rise above our immanence, our dispersion in the immediate and transitory affairs of the world, to reflect upon our life as a whole, in the fullest glare of its finitude and its potential to lack meaning. The vehicle through which we acknowledge this responsibility to ourselves is conscience. It acknowledges both our facticity, our being placed within a world, and our obligation actively to fashion ourselves in relation to this very world. Conscience makes us aware of this guilt or obligation. Heidegger views time as integral to the constitution of the self or human being. Time is the profoundest substratum of human existence. What Heidegger calls existential time is time that is unique to a particular person's consciousness, a person's life, his or her traversing of the journey between birth and death is most fundamentally constituted by time. Therefore, one's sense of existential responsibility is a temporal notion, lying in the ability to view her life from beginning to end. This ability to situate my present within a broader context of past and future actively engages in the world into which I have been cast. This assertion of my freedom in the midst of determination is seen by Heidegger as living out one's destiny. In his essay, The Origin of the Work of Art, Heidegger states that the origin of a work of art is art itself. Art is by nature an origin, 
a distinctive way in which truth comes into being that is becomes historical that is why he defines art as the setting into work of truth this process has two aspects art fixes truth in place within a particular figure and it also preserves truth heidegger broadens his definition of art to the creative preserving of truth in the work art then is the becoming and happening of truth art creates truths and preserves them the latter being a historical function art breaks open an open place in whose openness everything is other than usual everything ordinary and hitherto existing becomes an unbeing therefore art has the power to transform our earlier and ordinary conceptions of truth exposing the unreality of the arrangements of our ordinary life releasing us from the closure and rigidity of conventional perception heidegger states that the truth that discloses itself in the art can never be proved or derived from what went before heidegger insists that language has an important role beyond its merely communicative function language by naming beings for the first time first brings beings to word and to appearance therefore language not only creates but reveals the true being that is already there bringing this being to the light of expression in this sense language itself is poetry poetry takes place in language because language preserves the original nature of poetry heidegger views beauty as intrinsic to the expression of truth in art perhaps echoing platonic and even medieval conceptions of the connection between being truth and beauty language is the supreme event of human existence and poetry is the establishing of being by means of the word only speech enables man to be the living being he is as man language therefore cannot be treated merely as an appendage or adjective of the human an instrument of human communication and self definition it is not man but language which speaks it is language that first brings man about brings him into existence in this sense man is bespoken by language language speaks by bidding things come to world and world to things for world and things do not subsist alongside one another it is language which brings into visibility into being the bearing by each thing of its participation in a larger scheme in other words language allows things to achieve their thinghood by bringing to light the world born by them or implicitly contained within them a thing becomes a thing only by release through the power of language from its bare immediate particular existence and access into its own mediation by more general categories between world and thing prevails a condition of betweenness or what heidegger calls difference where the latter part of this noun may refer to the bearing or carrying of world by thing the intimacy of world and thing is present in the separation of the between it is present in the difference it is language which speaks language which brings together world and things in their intimacy which is a relation of absolute difference heidegger tells us that the difference carries out world in its worlding carries out things in their thinking thus carrying them out it carries them toward one another therefore it is language language that speaks which brings the processes of world composition and thing composition into the mutuality in which alone either can be realized in other words difference is not an external relation that connects two entities world and thing that are already there rather difference is internal to their relation shaping the very entities themselves heidegger insists that the world is not merely our way of representing a distinction between objects nor is it merely a relation between world and thing if language speaks by bidding by calling thing and world what is really called is the difference 
language speaks by bidding thing world and world thing to come to the between of the difference if difference primordially pre exists identity if difference is prior to the constitution of world and thing then language is the vehicle by which world and thing are called into being through mutual relation from this primordial difference into the difference which is language itself language goes on as the taking place or occurring of the difference for world and things what ultimately takes place in the speaking of language is the creation of what is human mortals live in the speaking of language